यहाँ देखें ये कर लिया था मैं कर लिया इसमें पर्टिकुलरली ये कर लिया था कर लें मैं या तो अपनी जगह बदलूं
इंटरक्वाटाइल रेंज mean deviation variance standard deviation and coefficient of variation range is simple uh, uh, just maximum minus minimum value if interquartile range q3 minus q1 when we need to study middle 50 values of the data quartile deviation q3 minus q1 divided by 2 so uh, in in these uh, measures uh, interquartile range when we uh, middle 50% uh, and moreover we have a coefficient of dispersion coefficient of quartile deviation so these coefficients uh, are also the dispersion measures and we prefer these measures when we need to compare the two or more sets of data for the comparison in this way uh, we avoid the units so the purpose is only to avoid the units uh, because uh, a set, data set may have the units uh, for example in seconds and uh, other is in liters different uh, data sets when we need to compare their variation their dispersion so we prefer coefficient uh, measures mean deviation particularly when our data set contains both positive and negative values that's why we take the modulus of the difference of the values with the mean value actually uh, in nature there always a tendency towards the average the values always always fall near the mean value they cluster along the mean value so how much they are uh, falling away from the mean value this is uh, the dispersion look at this my yes x minus x bar is the difference is the distance of a value from from the mean and we take the modulus because data contains both positive and negative values if we don't take the modulus we have different situation in this case if we don't take the modulus the sum of these differences will be zero due to this property 
the sum of the deviations from mean is always zero. That's why we take the modulus, adding all the absolute values, dividing by n. This is uh, called the mean deviation. Next is the variance. Again, the same thing uh, we observe here. Uh, first, x minus mu, the difference with the mean value, or you can say the distance from the mean value, the squares of the differences, and sum up all the squares dividing by n. So what we are doing here, these differences, these distances is called the deviation. We observe how the values are deviating from the mean value. So x minus mu is the deviation from mean value. So first we have deviation, its square, not square deviation we have, sum up and dividing by n. This means we are taking the mean of the squared deviations from mean value. This is called variance. This is most common measure of dispersion. Also we have uh, some alternative formula for this. And when we take a positive square root of the variance, it becomes standard deviation. So what is standard deviation? It is the positive square root of the variance. This variance or standard deviation, note that, is always non-negative. Non-negative means maybe zero or positive, but never negative. It it may be zero when our data set containing the same values. For example, ten data data values we have but all the same, this is called constant data. So in this case, there is no variation. If we trace out this data, we just have a dot in the xy plane. So a dot, even if, that, if this data is uh, repeated 100 times, even then we have a dot, single dot in the xy plane. So single dots don't have any variation or dispersion. Next is the coefficient of standard deviation. Standard deviation with respect to the mean value. So again, this is a relative measure. We calculate standard deviation with respect to its, its mean. This is called coefficient of a standard deviation. This is the ratio. Standard deviation divided by mean. It is a ratio. If we multiply with uh, 100, so this ratio now will be in percentage. In terms of percentage, this is called coefficient of variation. As already I said, that coefficients uh, are used for the comparison of the two, two or more data sets. Particularly, coefficient of variation is used for consistency, reliability, and stability 
of the system of the building of any construction of any manufactured process uh, product of any machine or the consistency of a flare if a, a batsman is scoring Forty runs, forty-five runs, fifty runs in consecutive five matches. He is consistent, but he, if he is scoring one hundred, then in next match zero, in third match uh, fifteen, then. A half century, so he is not consistent. Similarly, we need uh, in uh, our system a stability and reliability. So to check this, we have a measure which is called coefficient of variation. Okay. Uh, we have a little different calculation of the variance and standard deviation for sample data and population data particularly for sample data the division is by n minus 1 in both the cases of the calculation of Variance and standard deviation. Uh, just remember this thing that we have to divide by n minus 1 for the calculation of variance and standard deviation when the data is of sample, a particular sample. We will discuss this thing in detail when we discuss the sampling, the topic of the sampling. The reason here is X bar is an unbiased estimate of the population mean. Validate, we confirm the a claim about the population through samples. So when we draw samples, we calculate its parameters, which uh, the basic parameters are the mean and variance. So we use uh, these calculations of a sample. to calculate, either to calculate or to validate or to confirm the parameters of our population or to confirm a claim about the uh, population. In this way, X bar is an unbiased direct assess the population but through uh, of a sample data we cannot assess the variance of the population directly that's why the division by n minus 1 will make it unbiased. The distribution of uh, as such variances for different uh, samples will provide 
about population uh, variance. So in this way, the variance calculated through this formula is giving almost very much closer to a value of the population variance. But uh, the division by n will never lead to assess the variance of the population. So even, uh, I, I must say, we will uh, discuss these things in detail when we study uh, sampling, because uh, in that topic, we have to calculate the variance for sample data as well as uh, for the population data. Okay, let me uh, calculate some of the measures using a set of data. Let me have the information of 20 observations about breaking strength of test species of a certain alloy, which is given. Calculate average breaking strength and standardization. So uh, put all the values of x. This type of data is ungrouped data, ungrouped data. We don't have frequencies, we don't have classes. So this is called ungrouped data. Put all the values of x of your variable in first column. sum up and dividing by 20. This will give us the mean value. Further, uh, for the calculation of standard deviation, let me prefer uh, this formula. So for this purpose, we must have a column of x square, sum up sigma x square, and sigma x. These sums from first and second column will be put in this formula to calculate the standard deviation, which is 15.99. For mean deviation, construct another column of x minus x bar with modulus. Just avoid negative sign. All the deviations x minus x bar will be positive. Sum up, sum up, and dividing by n. This will be the mean deviation. Okay, if we uh, square this column, square all the values in this column, it will be x square minus x bar whole square sum up, this sum is the sum of the squared deviations from mean value. Take their average. We have the value of the variance. The sum of the squares is from fourth column dividing by n we have the value of the variance. As in this uh, data, in this uh, given information, it is not mentioned that this is a sample data. So that's why we are dividing with them. So uh, in this problem, in our problem, we can also calculate the coefficient of variation with the formula of sigma over x bar multiplied by Remember, in calculation of a mean deviation, 
if you don't take the modulus the answer will be zero so avoid this mistake that we have two sets of data with the information of mean and variance separately so we can calculate their coefficient of variation and compare so uh, lesser coefficient of uh, variation showing lesser stability less uh, consistency and uh, larger the coefficient of variation showing more stability okay one more thing a student completely calculate all the things but without taking the modulus he will get only one mark out of 5 for just uh, for just these deviations because uh, it shows that he is not familiar with the mean deviation because in mean deviation we have the modulus one thing and uh, one mark uh, for the mean and one for the deviation column if we don't consider their absolutes okay in coefficient of variation suppose uh, you are asked to calculate coefficient of standard deviation so so you will calculate only sigma over x bar but usually uh, student calculate it in terms of percentage in terms of percentage it becomes coefficient of variation if uh, you don't multiply with 100 only sigma over x bar the ratio of sigma over x bar this is coefficient of standard deviation so for this mistake uh, mistake you will get only two marks out of five so this will be the technique of marking okay uh, next is empirical uh, rule or chebyshev theorem as in interquartile range we have uh, the formula q3 minus q1 the purpose is to study middle 50 values of the data q3 minus q1 interquartile range Uh, but if uh, if we had a uh, different percentage of the data to study how can we uh, calculate we will use empirical rule or chebyshev theorem uh, what empirical rule says that approximately 68% of the data will fall within one standard deviation of the mean this is uh, an interval two standard deviation interval contains 95% of the data and three standard deviation interval contains approximately 99.7% of the data so 
what is the meaning of one standard deviation of mean, two standard deviation of mean, and three standard deviation of mean? If we uh, look at this diagram, I already said that in nature, the values cluster about the mean value. Here we have the mean value and all the other values are clustering about this mean value. How much they are away from the mean value? This is called the dispersion. Now, if we move from X bar to the left world with one S, both sides from mean value, by adding one S, we are here. Uh, by subtracting 1s, we are here. By adding 1s, we are here. So this interval is called one standard deviation interval. If we move two standard deviation on both the sides, by subtracting 2s from mean value, we are here. And by adding 2s, to the mean value, we are here. So this interval with green lines is two standard deviation interval. And similarly, we have three standard deviation interval. So this uh, smaller interval, one standard deviation interval is containing approximately 68% of the data Two standard deviation interval contains 95% of the data and three standard deviation interval will contain 99.7% of the data. We have only three types of interval in this case. One thing, one thing. In empirical rule, we have only three types of interval. And the other uh, restriction is that our data is normal or the frequency curve frequency curve is bell shape just like below. This is called a bell shape. A bell shape distribution is always normal or sometimes it is uh, stated that our data is normally distributed our information is normally distributed this means we have a frequency for that data set which is normal normal means normal and symmetrical we will study normality and symmetry just after this topic but remember, empirical rules works for a normal distribution and it provides certain percentage of the data for only three uh, types of interval. One standard deviation interval, one standard deviation of means, means one standard deviation of about the mean value, two standard deviation of the mean, two standard deviation is subtracted and added to the mean value. So this interval is again about the mean value, three standard deviation interval also about the mean value. One more thing remember, all these intervals contain approximately 
68 percent, approximately 95 percent, approximately 99.7 percent, not exactly. So uh, overall, in this uh, definition, we are discussing a percentage and an interval. So we are given two things. We are observing two things, a percentage and an interval. So uh, sometimes a percentage is given, we need to calculate the limits of the interval, corresponding interval. And sometimes the limits of an interval are given and we calculate the corresponding percentage of the data to fall in this interval. Okay, uh, look at this example. We have the data of heights of 18 years old male having bell-shaped distribution. Bell-shaped distribution means normal distribution with mean 69.6 and standard deviation 1.4. Now, about what proportion of all such men are between 68.2 and 71 inches tall? We are given an interval and we need to calculate a proportion, a percentage we will calculate by this given interval. So generally we have the limits x bar minus as 68.2 and right hand limit is x bar plus k ks which is equal to 71 we don't know the value of k it may be 1 2 or 3 data is well shaped uh, that's why we can apply empirical rule so From this equation, we have a value of k equal to 1. And from this equation, again, we have the same value of k. And by empirical rule, we know that one standard deviation interval one standard deviation interval about the mean value contains 68% of the data. In part uh, two, in part two, what interval centered on the mean value should contain 95% of, of the data? So as the distribution is bell shaped, definitely we can apply empirical rule. And we know that 95% data is contained in a particular interval, which interval is two standard deviation. So here in part two, we have a two standard deviation interval, which will contain this required percentage of the data. So it seems that uh, the situation is very simple. Yes, it is. But we have a complexity, we have a difficulty when 
in this uh, case we have different values of the situation will be reversed but otherwise we have very simple calculation when from both the equations we have the same values of k okay uh, let's see what happens when we have different values of k for example we are given these limits so small value is the left hand limit x bar minus ks and we denote larger value as a right hand point of the interval by x bar plus ks following both the equations we have k is equal to 1 and k is equal to 2 the problem is uh, that for k is equal to 1 the corresponding percentage is 68 for k is equal to 2 the corresponding percentage is 95% remember in this case we will take the average of both of these percentages 68% and 95% add and divide by 2 we will get 81.5% of the net okay uh, there is an uh, other situation when we have uh, a different percentage or we have different intervals other than 1 2 and 3 let's say fourth uh, standard deviation interval or 1.5 uh, standard deviation interval how much data will be contained we will calculate this by this formula just according to depending upon the value of k but this formula works only for k greater than 1 for k is equal to 1 it is giving nothing it will give this become zero is for k is equal to 1 this percentage become zero so this uh, this technique does not work for k is equal to 1 it works only for k greater than 1 okay this is the situation actually this is our mean value i am explaining the reason why we are taking the percentage of both the the average of both the percentages when we have different values of k okay as our dis uh, distribution is bell shaped so a bell shaped uh, distribution we have in which mean value is is in the center we have two intervals for k is equal to 1 x minus s and x plus x bar plus s this smaller interval is for k is equal to 1 which contains 68% of the data from okay for k is equal to 2 we have this interval x bar minus 2s and x bar x bar minus 2s and x bar plus 2s it will contain 95% of the data but our given range is this one and this one not this one if we calculate x bar minus 2s and 
एक्स बार प्लस एस नन ऑफ द टू इज एनी लिमिट गिवन इन आवर प्रॉब्लम वी आर गिवन दीज टू लिमिट्स टू कैलकुलेट द परसेंटेज ऑफ द डाटा ओके चेक दिस Let me check. We have this uh, situation if we uh, calculate all the limits. For both uh, k is equal to one and k is equal to two, k is equal to for k is equal to one we have this uh, this interval. This end point is equal to 68.2. What is this value? X bar in uh, X bar in our a question x bar is a 69.6 69.6 and uh, standard deviation value of s is 1.4 so 69.6 69.6 69. uh, Plus 1.4. We have 71 here. 71 here. So this point is 71. Okay. What about uh, x bar minus 2s? Because for k is equal to 2, we have this interval from this point to this point. And this value is 72.2. And uh, what happens uh, with this? As x bar is x bar is 69.6, and s is 1.4. 69.6. Minus two point eight. So we have sixty six point eight. Here, this end point is point eight. Is it possible? No. Sixty six. Okay. All right. This value is lesser than this, and this one is lesser than this one. Sixty eight point two and sixty eight point two is less than. 71, 71 is less than 72.4. Now all are shown on a line, but we are given, we are given an interval from 68.2 to 72.4. If we look at uh, the statement. Look at uh, the statement. This alternative uh, statement. We are given 68.2 and 72.4. This limit is given. So 
68.2 and 72.4 what are these limits not these limits these limits okay but our smaller interval our smaller interval contains for k is equal to 1 it is containing 68 68% of the data and our larger interval contains Ninety five percent of the data, but we need we need we need only from this point to this point. we need uh, only this one this means we are considering half of half of the smaller limit left half of the smaller uh, interval and right half of the larger interval half half of both the intervals we are considering here this is the reason that we are taking the average of both the percentages so finally we have our required percentage in given interval 68.68 uh, 68 by 2 half of 68% and half of 95% so finally we have 81.5 percent data in uh, for our uh, given interval. So this is a little difficulty when we have different value of k. Okay, uh, the situation when uh, the distribution is not bell shaped, when the distribution. is not normal so uh, some students ask in the exam that it is not given whether the distribution is bell shaped or not bell shaped if it is bell shaped it will be mentioned but if it is not a uh, bell shaped no need to mention it remember this thing if the distribution is bell shaped it will be mentioned but if it is not no need to mention so if it is not mentioned that the distribution is normal it is understood that the distribution is not normal so we will discuss the other case the other case is, is uh, it states that 1 minus 1 over k square percent of the data will con be contained in k standard deviation of the mean k standard deviation of the mean means k times the standard deviation so the interval is x bar minus ks to x bar plus ks this interval will contain
वन माइनस वन माइनस वन ओवर के स्क्वेयर परसेंट ऑफ द डेटा लुक एट दिस प्रॉब्लम और सैंपल साइज एन फिफ्टी मीन एंड स्टैंडर्डेशन इज गिवन विदाउट नोइंग एनी थिंग एल्स अबाउट द सैंपल वट कैन बी सेट अबाउट द नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन दैट लाई इन द इन दिस इंटरवल सो एन इंटरवल इज गिवन वी नीड टू कैलकुलेट द परसेंटेज ऑफ द डेटा सो इक्वेट बोथ लिमिट्स विद देयर जनरल फॉर्म x minus k s we don't know at the moment we don't know about the value of k so x minus k s is our left hand limit x bar plus k s is our right hand limit solve them we have k is equal to 2 so applying the formula applying the formula we have the percentage is 75 remember there is a one difference between empirical rule and cabinet empirical uh, in empirical rules interval contains approximately 68% approximately 95% approximately 99% uh, but in case of but in case of cabinet theorem interval x bar minus k s to x bar plus k s contains at least at least this percentage so when we get k is equal to 2 and calculate the percentage which is 75% 75% so this percentage is at least so at least 75% of these total values will be contained in our given interval if we don't care about these things we have studied by empirical rule that approximately approximately 95% of the data will be contained in two standard deviation interval but here we are saying that we are calculating that 75% of the data this uh, this is at least 75% but if uh, in this case the distribution is not uh, normal if it were then we say that approximately 95% of the data is contained in our given interval so remember this difference now check it again and ask me if you have some problem i have sent this uh, uh, this topic these examples the same text i have sent in whatsapp group you can also consult and go through these exam uh, examples these two examples and observe the difference as uh, for k same k we have different percentages because in first case we are applying empirical rule in second case we are applying cabinet theorem empirical rule provides approximate percentage of the data uh, but uh, in uh, cabinet theorem provides at least certain percentage of the data just after 5 uh, minutes 
we will uh, discuss the skewness and tortoises. Take a break and uh, observe these things and ask me if you have some problem. Just after five minutes.
जी अस्सलाम वालेकुम हां जी बेटा जी कोई है मेरे को प्रॉब्लम तो देखें एनीथिंग टू आस्क Okay, uh, we should continue. In sequinus and kurtosis, we discuss the peak and and the symmetry. Sequinus, uh, uh, a word, an opposite word of symmetry. when the distribution is not symmetry symmetrical it will be skewed either on the left hand side like this like this second diagram it is skewed to the right and in this case it is skewed to the left so when it is not skewed it will be symmetrical and what is the advantage of uh, this symmetry a symmetrical distribution always having mean mode and median in the center at the same position but when uh, the distribution is skewed suppose it is uh, skewed to the right side it is called positively skewed in this case the data flow is towards the right uh, right hand side in this case mode will be against the highest peak wherever we have the highest peak against this uh, top a value on the a corresponding value on the x axis not the peak a value on the x axis will be the mode mean is the right hand on the right hand side and median will be here median is at a one third of uh, this distance the distance from mean and mode this distance is larger than this distance of the mean from median so this smaller distance is one third of the larger distance and mathematically we have stated the relation between these distances mean minus mode mean minus mode is the larger distance mean minus mode because now all the values are on the x axis mode is less than the median and median is less than the mean we can also declare that the distribution is positively skewed if mode is less than median or mode is less than mean or median is less than mean so if we have any clue about mean mode median we can uh, declare that the distribution is positively skewed so mean minus mode is the uh, larger distance mean minus median is the smaller distance how can we equate them if we multiply smaller distance by 3 it becomes equal to the larger distance so this is in this way we have a relation between mean mode and median also in this case whenever mean is less than median or mean is less than mode or median is less than mode 
in either of the uh, one clue, if we have, we can say that the distribution is negatively skewed. Mode is against highest peak. Median is in between mean and mode, but at uh, one third of this larger distance. Again, the same relation we have. Okay. Also, we have an alternative formula mean minus mode divided by standard deviation. Alternative formula we use according to our given information, according to our availability. What information is given? So, using the given information, now which formula can be applied? So that's why we need to discuss some alternatives. So uh, B1, we denote the coefficient of skewness coefficient of skewness noted by B1 and this value is if equal to zero, the distribution is symmetrical. If it is positive, just greater than zero. It is positively skewed. If it is negative, it is negatively skewed. Also, we have one another alternative. When a quartiles are given, even then we can decide about the skewness. So try these uh, questions. And kurtosis. We may have uh, a situation like this. Uh, we have three different uh, three different uh, distributions, uh, and all are symmetrical, all are normal. Uh, that's why sometimes their mean value may be the same. So here we have the mean value for all these three distributions. So, how can we differentiate them? So, with the help of their peak, the peak of the frequency curve. Sometimes this peak is flat, flat. Sometimes the peak is extraordinary high, and sometimes it is normal. This flatness uh, is called platycartic. Platycartic. After the, uh, this is due to the uh, after uh, the name of the scientist Kartik. That's why he named this uh, these distributions after his own name. Platy platy means flat flat. Platycartic. Mesocartic, mesocartic is normal. Mesocartic is, or we can say, the normal. And uh, leptocartic, leaping, leaping with high peak. Leptocartic. And we calculate uh, these coefficients with this form, uh, with these formula. Also, we have uh, some alternative. Uh, you can see them, observe them from these problems. The, the formula for uh, skewness, alternative formula, uh, B1 is we have. Let me find out. We have 
x x minus x bar x bar x minus x bar x uh, x minus x bar uh, next uh, power 3 power 3 Power three. <clears throat> In the denominator, uh, we have we have by n the same expression the same expression Power three by two. I think this is the situation. And summation sigma we uh, we must have here sigma sigma. and also sigma here so i will state uh, the problem uh, these formula alternative formula in this text shall so this will be just a uh, uh, construction of just a construction of a table we we need e is x minus x bar and then is power 3 mm -hmm. and also uh, is power 2 uh, then putting all this in the formula uh, we can get uh, our value which is denoted by b1 so again we will decide whether this value is 0 uh, or greater than 0 or less than 0 on this basis we can decide that the distribution is symmetrical or positively skewed or negatively skewed so uh, we will discuss inshallah next time and that will be the end of this uh, this topic this uh, descriptive statistics inshallah the remaining topic is 
the weighted mean, uh, geometric mean, and uh, harmonic mean. And when we prefer uh, these measures, not always uh, we can uh, prefer arithmetic mean. Although it is uh, the most common average, uh, but we don't prefer all the time. Okay, any any question for them? Today only uh, 31 participants. Uh, please uh, uh, be careful about uh, your percentage attendance because you have to maintain 75% of your attendance. I'm not uh, bothering uh, when a person is joining. If he is late, even then I'm taking their attendance. Uh, but you should also care about uh, this. You have to maintain your 70. Uh, five percent of the attendance. There is uh, no weightage uh, of the attendance in your assessment. But uh, with lesser uh, percentage attendance, student will not be allowed to sit in final exam. Today we have uh, 30, 30 attempts. Just one person has uh, have left. There were 31, but now 30. Okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I'll see you next time.